When I used to do seminars on how to become a champion, I、uh, would always ask people, "Why do you want to be a champion? Or what do you want to accomplish? Why are you training?" And they would, if, you, if a guy would get up and he would say, "Well, I want to train because I think that if I get muscular and、um, you know I feel like I'm getting the kind of definition, then I maybe can end a, a bodybuilding competition." I said, "Sit down." Is if you think this way, you're going to be a loser. You're never going to make it because there's no maybe. You got to get up and say, "I want to be a champion," and I do whatever it takes, the amount of hours it takes, the posing, the this, the that, the visualization, looking at training footage, looking at motivational books, just reading this, reading whatever it takes, I would do. That's the answer I want to hear from you. You can detect right away those that are going to be shaky. And that will fall behind, and they will not go all the way. And those that are very hungry, and that hunger you have to develop because you have to create a goal for yourself, whatever that may be—a short-term goal and a long-term goal—and you got to go after that. And if you do not see, and if you do not believe it, who else will? Experiencing、uh, pain in your muscles and aching, and just then go on and go on and go on, and this last two or three or four repetitions—that's what makes actually the muscle then grow, and that、uh, d- divides then one from a champion and one from not being a champion. If you can go through this pain barrier, you make it to be a champion. If you can go through, forget it. And that's where most people lack is on this having the guts. The guts to go in and just say I go through, and I don't care what happens. You know, it aches, and if I fall down, I have, I have no fear of fainting in a gym, because I know it's it, it could happen. I threw up many times while I was working out, but it doesn't matter, because it's all worth it. Everyone has a problem with time, but the day is 24 hours, and we sleep six. Now I know there's some out there that say, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! I need eight. Well, I say just sleep a little faster, because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available. So if 18 hours are now available, do your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new, which could easily be that you want to learn a new language." Or that you want to read as a you know, New Year's resolution, I have to read a book every week, or, or you say I'm going to go and reshape my body. So you're going to go and take this hour out of your schedule and say I'm going to train an hour every day. So this is for most people a, hu- a huge challenge, but it is totally doable. I can tell them because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country. I mean, I went to school. I was working in construction. I was working out my five hours a day. I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to twelve midnight. I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious, and so there I just want to tell people: don't give me this thing. I have a difficult time with the time, and I don't have time for this. And I don't have that. You have time. You make the time. I had this need. Of coming to America, I mean, when I started learning about America at the age of ten, and we got geography lessons and, and、uh, learned about、uh, America and about、uh, and saw the first photographs. I remember in those、uh, photos in the textbook, but also in super eight millimeter film footage that they showed in the classroom. You know about the Golden Gate Bridge and the Empire State Building and the, the six lane highways and all this. I said, "What am I doing here in Austria? I mean, these little roads. I want to go over there. I want to be part of the the, the big deal." And、uh, so I had always this desire. I felt like that the only way I ever would get to America, because in those days it wasn't common that you buy yourself a ticket. That no one could afford that. So the, I had to kind of accomplish something big that takes me to America. And then when I, I read about this guy Reg Park, who won Mr. Universe three times. And then became a star in Hercules movies, and then was in Italy filming, and then in Hollywood filming. I felt that could be the ticket. I should become Mr. Universe. I should become kind of a second Reg Park. Of course, no one really bought into that. My parents thought that was totally insane. And、uh, but they just—I think that、uh, my parents really thought that there was something terribly wrong of being that driven. You know, because I would come home at lunchtime, and then instead of having lunch, I would do 200 sit-ups. 
And at night I will go to the stadium and I will be lifting weights. I will come home at 10 o'clock at night and I will be continually lifting weights. So it was like one of this insanity in the military. I will continue lifting weights no matter how the training was and how tough the basic training was. I would always then lift weights afterwards. I think it's the most important thing that we have a very clear vision of where we go. A goal, where, where do we go? Because you can have the best ship in the world. You can have the best cruise liner, but if the captain does not know where to go, that ship will drift around the world and out there at sea and will never end up anywhere. And this is exactly the way it is in real life. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a vision, you just drift around. And you're not going to be happy. This is why it is so important to have that vision. Now, I created that vision in Austria because I grew up after the Second World War. Austria, right along with Germany, lost the Second World War. And the problem was that everyone was so depressed because they lost the war that there was alcoholism everywhere. There was, of course, depression. There was a terrible economic situation. There was famine, there was starvation and all of those things. And also it was kind of a little place and narrow, I felt kind of, I wanted to get out of there, I wanted to escape. And I couldn't see myself really to work there and to stay there, to work in a factory, or to work on a farm, or to even to follow my father's footsteps and to become a police officer. I couldn't see that either. As a matter of fact, that's what my, my parents wanted me to do. But that's not what I saw. This was the vision of my parents, but not mine. You get to work your butt off. Um, if you think that you're gonna go and accomplish something really special and be the best in anything in the world, and you think you can do it without working, you make a big mistake. Because no matter what I did, if it was in bodybuilding or in acting or if it is in, in, in the political arena, uh, it always took a lot, a lot of work. And you got to put out and you got to, you know, something to make a lot of sacrifices and all this. If you're not willing to work hard, forget about it. So this is another rule that is uh, very important. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, because if you're afraid to fail, then you're always holding yourself back because you're afraid that if you go all out, you may fail. Well, in weightlifting, we learned that very quickly. The only way you could break a record is if you're willing to fail. That's when you put on more weight, you try it. Sometimes you maybe don't, you would not be able to lift it, uh, which has happened to me many times. But eventually, when you train hard enough, you will lift it. So don't be afraid to fail. I mean, how far can you fall?